Hey, what's up? Welcome to this class. My name is Flo. This is a movement practice I would like to share with you today. And it is very independent from any kind of sport you're doing. It's independent from yoga. It's independent from BJJ or cycling or whatever you're doing. But it can be applied to all of those activities. I believe that if you move better, you will also be better in your specific activity and by improving your general movement capacities you will also increase and improve in your very specific movement things that you need. We all need different kind of movements and movement series for certain activities and it helps to go from general to specific. So this class today is more of a general practice, general generic movement practice and then when you go back to your sport you get specific. This is wonderful to use for Jiu Jitsu for example. I recommend doing this kind of practice to all people that do Jiu Jitsu. I'm kind of biased towards Jiu Jitsu because I practice myself and I have been for many many years. It's also good for cycling or basketball or whatever you're doing for running but I'm just not into those things so that's why I cannot speak from experience. But I have heard from many of my friends and students that all of this movement uh, workouts and practices that I share here on the channel help tremendously even with golfing. The other day someone told me that his golfing has improved a lot by just doing yoga and doing these classes here on the channel. For today's practice you really don't need anything. If you have carpet at home you can just be on the ground on carpet. If you have a mat then use the mat and grab that now. But that's really it. I'll try to keep this very short and let's get right to it. We are starting in a seated position so I will rotate on my mat. Sitting on the heels but stay on the toes. Then place your hands down to the ground. Kind of like a tabletop position you might know from other forms of movement or practice but more of a shorter tabletop so bring the hands closer to the knees. Spread your fingers a little bit wider and then start to move forward as far as you can with your arms straight and send it back. Shift forward, back, let's do three, two, one. Now internally rotate the hands five times again, forward and back, four, three, keep the arms straight, two, one. Very good, lean back. Now externally rotate the hands five times, forward and back. Very good. Now the fingertips are pointing outwards, lean to the right, keep the arms straight. If the right palm wants to lift up, that's perfectly fine, allow it to happen. Over to the left, to the right, to the left. Let's go three more two and one very good now the last one the fingertips are pointing towards the knees keep the arms straight send the hips back stay on the toes so you're stretching out the feet and the toes as well and we're also stretching out the forearms the wrists the hands so if you're doing any kind of sport that involves your hands a lot like tennis table tennis basketball you know working on the wrists and the forearms is very good in general i believe the more or the better you move in every joint in your body, the better you will perform at your specific sport. And this practice today is really targeting the full body, almost every joint in the body. And so hopefully this helps you feel better and also move better. Very good. Release, shake out the hands. And then let's all meet in a tabletop. Now this time untuck the toes. Let's start to move the spine a little bit. Tuck your tailbone around your back. So this is cat pose. And then we're moving into cow pose where you arch your back. But instead of doing it fast and with not much awareness, like moving between cat and cow, I want you to move really slow and controlled. I want you to move from the ground, from the base of your spine, from your tailbone, slowly upwards through the spine, as slow as you can. 
and we're just doing three rounds for that reason because it's quite slow and it can also be quite intense but you are training your nervous system to really fire in those specific and sometimes small areas imagine you want to move one vertebrae at a time so let's do it nice and slow we start in cat pose round your back and then start to uncurl the spine slowly from the base of the spine upwards so don't move anything else only that specific part slowly moving up through the spine keep breathing until you are in cow pose and then from the base of your spine back to cat start to round from the bottom slowly moving up very good that's just one round i find it quite intense not sure about you but let's do two more rounds because you really have to concentrate and isolate each vertebrae, at least you're trying your best. Back to cat. Move from the ground up only. Try to not move any other parts until you're really there to move them. One more round. Slowly transitioning to cow. And to cat, last one. Very good, take a break. Awesome job. I always start to sweat a little bit by doing this kind of practice and so slow and so controlled because it really requires lots of focus and a lot from the nervous system and the neurons to fire in that specific area. But let's continue tabletop again doing some spine balancing you know they say and i also say this and seconded that you're only as old or only as healthy as your spine is mobile so we try to keep the spine mobile and healthy so that we can just feel good and perform well reach your right arm forward the left leg back try to pull the belly in so you find more of a tuck in your tailbone so you're not arching your back like this but you're finding more of a more of a tuck very good just hold it there you can stay on the tops of your right foot the top of your right foot or come onto the right toes you decide keep the tailbone tucked keep reaching the right hand forward the left leg back hold it there for 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 and 1 release other side no break here extend the right leg back left arm forward Pull the belly in, tuck the tailbone, flex the right foot so that the right toes are pointing down or even towards your body, towards the center of your body. Keep pressing into the right shoulder, feel the right fingertips, lift your left hand higher up, hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Release. Very good. Sit on the heels, shake out the hands. Beautiful. Let's come into a tabletop again and then transition to plank pose. So extend the leg back, the legs back. Tuck your tailbone and engage the core. So a plank is not really a straight line like this because there's no support from your core and it's also pretty heavy over time on your back. So you want to lift your hips a little bit higher up, engage your glutes, tuck your tailbone, push the ground away so that that part between the shoulder blades reaches up towards the ceiling firm into the inner hands breathe from here we're sending the hips up and back to downward facing dog try to not move the hands try to not move the feet keep the legs bent however if you need to and then roll through the spine forward to plank we're again moving through the spine and back up to downward dog forward to plank Back to downward dog. We're doing three more. I cannot really tuck my chin to the chest too much because of the microphone, but you can and should fully tuck the chin to the chest. Very good. Back to downward dog. Last one, forward to plank. And to down dog. 
Now from down walk, we move forward through plank to upward facing dog. So you can bring the feet wider apart if you want to. That makes it more gentle for your lower back. I'll widen my stance with the feet. Very good. Now move through the spine forward. Let the hips sink down. Flex your butt cheeks. Look straight ahead, upward facing dog. And then through the spine, start with the top. Tuck the, tuck the chin to the chest. Move through the spine up, downward dog. And now we move from the bottom up to the top of the spine, through plank, upward facing dog, back to downward dog. Three more on your own, nice and slow, keep breathing. Keep pushing the ground away. Flex your butt cheeks, very important. And last two. And last one. We will then meet in downward dog. Awesome. Set the knees down. Sit on the heels again. Try to be on the tops of your feet. If that's not comfortable for you, I'm also working on some more mobility videos for ankle mobility so that you increase your range of motion there. So if this is uncomfortable for you already, then sit on a block or two and just hang out here. If this feels good for you and is very accessible in terms of knee range of motion and also the ankles, stay here, continue. We bring the feet together, the knees together, the legs together, fingertips on the ground, and then you lean back, lift the knees up and lower. Lift and lower. Let's go for 10, 9, 8, Seven, just keep going. So we're opening up the tops of the feet, the ankles. Let's do three, two, and one. Now we hold. Maybe take the hands off the ground. Do whatever you want with your hands. Hold for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Isn't it comfortable? I know. Four, three, two, and one. Very good. Release down. Beautiful job. Let's come onto the belly for a uh, prone twist. I also like to call it um, a wrestler's twist. Maybe you know it from wrestling or jiu-jitsu if that's something you're into. Otherwise, no worries, I'll guide you. You extend the right arm out first, out to your side. Make sure the right shoulder is down on the ground. Then you lift your left leg up, bend your left leg and bring it over to the right side. Your left hand is just with the fingertips on the ground and you just stay there. So it's a nice twist for the spine. Very nice to uh, mostly twist the lower body. Also nice for the hips, or the lower part of your spine, I should say. Maybe here's some popping or cracking in your spine without any pain, then, then that's all good. You can relax the head down and just stay here for three or so breaths. Try to pull the left leg, the left knee more to the left, which is from, which means towards the, the right hand. So it's kind of the right side, but from the knee's perspective, also the left. I know sometimes it's confusing. But we could release a little bit, so you come more into the belly. Now you're reaching the arm, or walk the hand more up, more of a half of a V shape. Very good. And then open back up with the lower body and the left leg. If your left foot is touching the ground, then that's great. If not, that's also great. Just do what feels good for you here. If this doesn't feel good at any point, then please stop. Very good. Release a little bit. We readjust the right hand. Now bend your right arm 90 degrees. We call this in yoga cactus arms. And now this one is very deep, so be very careful when you rotate back with the foot. I cannot bring my foot all the way to the ground. I feel a lot of um, stretch in the right shoulder. 
and also in the joint. I feel like this is at least for today my max. Maybe tomorrow I can bring the foot back down. Maybe yesterday I did. Doesn't really matter. You want to just work with what you have today. And so you find that end range that feels good for you where it can stay. And that's perfect. Very good. Slowly release a little bit again. We do one more readjustment. You now extend your arm and then you internally rotate so that the right um, fingertips are pointing down and then you come back into it. Most people have more internal rotation in the, in the shoulder joint than in the external rotation. It's just a more um, natural position that we are in day to day. This is why we encourage so much the external rotation in the shoulder to counter all of that in the other classes that we do. Very good. And slowly release fully, come back onto your belly. Take your time. It's a, it's a long twist for the spine. Let's come into Sphinx pose. So your forearms are on the ground. Ideally they are parallel to another, so again we encourage that external rotation. The elbows underneath the shoulders, untuck the toes, engage your glutes, look straight ahead. Breathe deeply into the belly, keep the hips on the ground. And now start to straighten your arms, if accessible for you, otherwise skip it for seal pose. Engage the glutes even more, externally rotate the arms and come back down for sphinx. Now you either stay in sphinx or you follow along with me. Straighten for seal and down to sphinx. Let's go for five. Four, keep the glutes engaged, three, two, and one. Back down to Sphinx, all together, very good. Now from here, everything else still is the same as before. In Sphinx pose, keep the glutes engaged, press the hips down. But now you start to again move from the base of, at the top of your spine, from your head, all the way down to the base of your spine, but the entire time you keep the hips on the ground. You start by tucking the chin to the chest, but keep reaching up with the back of your, of your neck, so you're still reaching upwards towards the ceiling. And you slowly curl the upper body more, try to round your upper spine, your thoracic spine only, but keep the hips on the ground, engage your glutes, hold for five, four, three, two, one. Slowly uncurl from the bottom all the way up to the top. Now the chin lifts from the chest. And let's do two more just like that. Slowly tuck the chin to the chest, but keep the length in your cervical spine, the top of your spine where your neck is. And then start to work and round the thoracic spine only. It's so hard to round for most people. Also hard to move the thoracic spine only. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly uncurl from the bottom all the way up. And one more last one. Exhale and curl and round. Five, four, three, keep the glutes engaged. Two, one, slowly uncurl back to Sphinx. Beautiful job. Let's release down, press up to a tabletop. Now from this tabletop we are doing a couple of movement drills that if you are doing martial arts or jiu-jitsu, you know I'm kind of biased towards jiu-jitsu. I just love it. But again, everyone will benefit from this and this is also a nice coordination drill, a little bit of strength, not too much and we're just moving a little bit left to right. I'll show it real quick, we're doing five each side, you're coming from a tabletop or I like to call it turbo cat um, or turbo tabletop where you lift the, the knees up off the ground and then you extend one leg through, the heel comes down and you're kind of as if you're pulling with the other hand towards you, the arm is straight and then slowly back through that turbo tabletop to the other side. So you want to rotate, if you look to my feet, you want to rotate on your toes or on the ball of your foot. But you don't want to rotate with something here with the heel down, so you still can move the knee and the foot, okay? Just to keep the knees safe. 
Very good. When you're ready, join me. Let's do five each side. Nice and slow. Move through that starting position, that middle position, with the knees close to the ground, and then the other side. Now we're at three. And two. Keep it nice and slow, keep breathing. Last one. Keep pushing into the palm that's on the ground. And back. Let's meet in downward facing dog. Very good job. Set the knees down. And let's come on to the belly again into a prone position. And we're now doing the other side. So now I'm a little bit away or facing away from you with my hand. But since you saw it on the first side, it should be now okay. I'll guide you still through it. Just listen closely. So extend your left arm out straight away from you, 90 degrees to the body. Lift your right leg up, bend the right foot, and then bring it over to the left side. Very good. You can relax the head down. Actually, now I can see you. Awesome. So you can be on your right fingertips. Just hang out here. Also know that one side is different than the other. No need to force it. Again, feel it. Forget how it looks, how it's supposed to look. There's really no... It's supposed to look like this. I try to encourage you to feel more. I give you all the instructions to stay safe. But then really it's all about feeling and breathing. Oftentimes relaxing into it, sometimes pushing into it. Right now it's more relaxing. Keep the right glute engaged a little bit. Very good. Try to open that right knee more up. And then slowly release halfway. We are now walking the left hand more forward so it's the left side of a V shape and then come back into it. Three deep breaths. And release halfway. Bend your left arm 90 degrees. Now cactus arm. Very good. And slowly, slowly be very careful here. Come back into it. Now for me the left shoulder is even tighter than the right. So for me this is my end range. But it feels good. Keep breathing into it. Especially send the breath into those parts of your body where you feel it. Slowly release. Now internally rotate the left arm, so you bend it 90 degrees, but now the, the fingers are pointing downwards, and then come back into it. Three deep breaths. Very good. And release. Lay on your belly, bring your forehead down to the ground or rest your forehead on your hands. Come onto your toes and then rock, shake out the hips left and right. Awesome job. Let's come into a seated position again, sitting on the heels. Now we are extending the legs forward, so you can get to that position however you want to. But if you want to work a little bit on, on strength and do it in a more controlled way, then I recommend you bring the legs through from Lolasana. So maybe take a look real quick and then try it yourself. Hands go next to your body, straighten your arms, push, and then you cross the ankle. Extend it through and down. Very good. So give it a try. I'll meet you here. 
and then we are moving into a reverse tabletop. So you bend your legs, bring the feet wider apart than your hips. Your hands go behind you, the fingertips are pointing towards you and you start to lift your hips up. Engage your glutes, lift the hips up high. For me, the hips are on the same height as the knees, but also know that I'm doing this stuff every single day. So if you're new to it, your hips might be down here, and that's perfectly fine. That comes a lot from uh, spine mobility and also your shoulders to actually go into this position. So just keep working on it. If you feel a stretch sensation in the shoulders, then that's perfect. So wherever you feel this when you're here, Wherever you feel this in your body, that's where the limitation is or where you uh, will, will work on it, work on more. So as you're going through the practice, things will open up. All right, now we gotta lower the, or we will lower the hips down, extend the legs, we're coming into an L-sit, point the toes. So you lift the hips and the legs up, come to, back down with the feet, come back up to reverse tabletop. Let's do two more, lower the hips down, Send them back, straighten the legs, L sit, and back up to reverse tabletop. If you do this and the feet do not lift off the ground, that's also cool. Let's do one more because it's so nice and I explained so much. Perfect. Set the hips down forward or send them forward close to the heels. Very good. Let's come onto the back for bridge pose. I'll readjust my microphone, perfect. Come onto the back. Bridge pose, lift the hips up and lower. Bring the heels close to the hips if they're not already, lift up. Engage the glutes and lower. Keep the hands by your sides. Let's lift for five, four, three, two and one very good release the hips down now we're doing the same thing we're lifting the hips up but we are reaching with one arm up and over so you actually lift up and then you come onto this case the right side shoulder blade and your left arm is reaching over your head then you come back down with the hips lift the hips up and you reach over okay so we're doing a lift a little bit of a back bend and a twist and reach. Let's go for five each side. Lift the hips up, come onto your right shoulder blade, reach the left arm over and back with the hips down, almost touching. Lift the hips up, lean to your left, reach the right arm over. Very good. Let's do four more each side. Try to move nice and slow, controlled. Three more each side, at least for me, but take your time. Keep breathing, last one. Very good. Let's meet in bridge pose, keep the hips lifted. No break here. Bring the heels closer to your hips if you want to. And hold. Keep pushing the hips up, keep the glutes engaged. Feel a slight um, arch or back bend in your spine. Spinal extension. If you want to work a little bit more in this position, then start to, without moving the feet, pull the feet up towards the shoulder blades. That way you engage the entire back side of your body. Also make sure you keep a gap between the chin and the chest. Keep lifting the hips up high. Feel the glutes. Maybe feel the burn. Breathe through it. Hold for 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly release down. Beautiful job. Keep the feet as they are. Just bring the knees together. Relax. Let the spine relax as well. Breathe. Start to windshield by up your legs, left and right. And then you have a choice. You can either lay here on your back with the legs bent or you extend the legs forward. 
You can also come up to a seated position if you want. I recommend that you take at least a few minutes on your back and you just relax before you continue with your day. I hope you're feeling good. No, it takes time just like everything to get comfortable with those movements, especially if you are new to this kind of practice, it might be quite challenging. Just keep it up, just keep practicing, just enjoy what your body is capable of doing today. Trust the process, if you continue to show up every single day, then your body will open up, you will get stronger, more mobile, more flexible, and hopefully this then also benefits your training, your specific training you do. Remember, we always want to move from general to or generic to specific. So in a week where you have your specific training, whatever activity it is, make sure you also have some general movement practice in there so that you really benefit from both and actually get better at both and be stronger and improve your, your skills and your uh, performance with it. Oftentimes people get too specific and then they only do this specific thing and then the body lags and compensates in all kinds of places. This is why it's so important to really do a well-rounded training week if you are on a training schedule for example. So let's be more specific if you go to soccer training three times a week or four times a week or to the gym or to jiu-jitsu or you play golf twice a week or once a week. Maybe you're a pro and you play every day or basketball, then make sure you balance that specific training out with some more generic movement training. If you enjoyed this class, please like the video below, subscribe to the channel, just hit this triangle here in the corner, we make it very easy for you to subscribe, that really helps us out so that we can produce more videos like this and we also get some feedback from you what videos we should record and film more of. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Keep up the good work, keep practicing. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.